are juhal, they are brainwashed, they are told false stories, and they get emotional and they start hating the people they are told to hate. Number one. What about the ones with the scholars? <laughs> the muammams. Muammam, the word muammam. Huh? Yes, those guys. The ones with the turbans and the the gown. The turbans and the gown. They are real kuffar. They are real kuffar. Why? 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 Because they hide the religion from the masses. The, the scholars, because of their knowledge, they are disbelievers. Because they know. They know this is kufal. They know. For example, huh? What aspect of knowledge is For example, for, ex for example, they know, they know that their belief is the Quran is corrupted. No, the Sorry. Sorry. No, no, no. No, 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 no. The ulama, not the awam. No, no, wait, wait, wait. If you ask a Shia on the street, do you believe in the Quran? It is, said, is, it, yes. is it preserved? Is it complete? Yes, yes, yes. yes. They don't know. You go to a muammam. I'll tell you how to get the answer. You go to a muammam and ask him. Anyone who believes that the Quran is changed or corrupted, is he a kafir or a Muslim? They will say, no, 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 he's not a kafir. He's, he's, he's misguided. Wait, wait, wait. You come to a Muslim, you come to a Muslim child at 10 years old, okay? Ask him, anyone who believes the Quran is corrupted, is a kafir. Yeah. So you don't need a mufti. Yeah. Yeah. They may believe that they are not Muslims, but they themselves don't believe that. Okay, wait. They believe it is there is there is a man. There is okay. You know you know where Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu is buried, according to the Shia. Najaf. Yes. And in that area, only the most special scholars and people can be buried. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. There is a there is a there is a Shia scholar. And uh, his name is uh, Nuri, Nuri at tabrasi Nuri at tabrasi He wrote a book titled Faslul Khitab. Faslul Khitab. Tahrif. Tahrif. Kitab Rabbi al Arbab. You are an Arab? Translate that. Faslul Khitab. How to talk to people about no. the Quran or the Quran? Faslul Khitab. Decisive, decisive talk in the corruption of the Kitabullah. In the corruption of Kitabullah. This guy is called Nuri at Tabarasi. He wrote a book to prove that Kitabullah was corrupted. And you know where he's buried? You know where he's buried? Najaf. Najaf in the mausoleum of Ali bin Abi Talib. They have this belief, brother. No, and it's an, uh, the belief is uh, there are 2,000, there are 2,000, wait, there is a book, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what to do, go and read a book, it is titled Ash-Shia Ash Wal Quran, Ash-Shia Wal Quran by Ihsan Ilahi Zahir, it's in Arabic, he put 2,000 reports from Shia books that prove that Shia believe that the Quran is corrupted, yalla, yalla, go check, go and check, okay, so, so this game, Okay. Sheikh, didn't answer Allah, the Sheikh. question about Uthman. Yeah, what about Uthman? Uh, the same thing happened to him that happened to Fatima, my friend. What happened to him? <laughs> his wife or something. I don't know. Khawari, Khawari should do that. I don't remember the source. Something happened to his wife and he left her. No, no. No, that's no. Are you sure? No, I'm sure, yes. I don't know about it. Uh, Uthman's wife is prophet uh, daughter. Uh, yeah. is called because he was married to Ruqayya and Umar. And amazingly, you know what? The Shia say they were not his daughters. <laughs> the Shia, they say those were not the daughters of Muhammad Rasulullah and Khadija radiallahu anha. They were daughters from the previous marriage. Though, because, they, because the Prophet got them married to Uthman, two of them, Umm Kathum and Ruqayya, one after the other, they say, no, 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 they were actually dispensable. The Prophet, yeah, yeah. you know, just like Ali, Umm Kulthum married to Umar, dispensable. Yeah. Dispensable. Yeah. You just, yeah. 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 Allah said the Quran. Uh, let, let, let me come back. One, no, one, no, one, no, one. Yeah. yeah, he's, he's called, yeah. I just have to research what I said. Research. I have a question. Yeah. Was the was, uh, when she thought she was... Uh, uh, are you Shia? Sure. Most of the Kafas, they were mad at her. Sorry? Uh, she was mad at, at the Kafas. Fatima, no. 
No. Do you want? Do you, you mind coming? Okay, you want to stay there? No problem. No, no. He has. Uh, please, please, relax. Leave him, brother. Yeah. Uh, so there's a Shia. There's a Shia. There's a Shia brother in humanity. He's asking this question. Okay, so everyone knows, right? So your question is, Fatima was angry with the companions. Okay. If Fatima, if Fatima radiallahu anha was angry with the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who would have known this? Her husband. Her and husband and sleeps with her every day. Every night he's with her. She would tell. She would tell him, "I am angry with these people." What does Ali radiallahu anhu do? What does he do? Nothing. He gives his daughter to Omar. He marries the wife of Abu Bakr when he dies. He's mixing with them, working with them, doing everything with them, fighting wars with them. And he built Umar beside yes, Prophet yes, Hassan, yes, and he yes, watched yes, Umar yes. beside. So, oh, so, I mean. so this story is a false story, it's a lie. Okay, okay, wait, another, another, another point I have. Her sons, Hassan and Hussein, Hassanayn, radiallahu anhuma, they would have known their mother hated these people. Yes? Yes or no? Yes. They were fighting wars with them, side by side. They were living with them, getting married with them, getting married to their daughters, getting married to their women, giving them their daughters, okay? And naming their children after them, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman. Wallahi, this is true. Wallahi, this is true. So the entire religion doesn't make sense. I'm Shia like them. You know, I'm, my, my, I'm you was? Abad. Yes, I'm okay. Shia, but Alhamdulillah, Allah said the Quran, Said, you were Shia and you became Sunni? Yes, of course. They said, don't follow up. Allah said in the Quran, Inna wajidna aba'ana ala ummati wa inna ala atiqal awa law kana aba'ahum la ya'khiru la shayna wa yahtadun. Don't follow blindly your father. Absolutely. Because it's go wrong, you should Absolutely. be wrong. This is shirk. Because so my brothers, this information today I gave you, every single word I said, every single claim I made, I stand by it and I will prove it. If okay. you want evidence, one last question, Chef. Yeah. What tell your what is your sons on Man kuntu maula? Fahada Ali 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 maula. Allahumma wali man wala. Wa adi man adi man ada. This is the hadith. We accept it. We accept it. Here the Prophet is saying, not Man Ali. kuntu maula hu fa Ali maula hu. Okay. Whoever. Friend, I am Ali is his friend. What does what does Mawla mean? Mawla means Mahabba. Mawla, the word Mawla is explained by the remaining of the hadith. Because when you continue reading, Allahumma wali. Allahumma wali. Man wala. Oh Allah, you become the wali of the one who is his wali. Allahumma adi man ada. So the word adi and ada explains what's the meaning of the wali or Mawla. It means, it's what, is, what is Adi? What Follow. is Udu? Enemy. Enemy. And what is the opposite uh, enemy? Friend, Wali. Halas. That's the meaning. That's the meaning okay, of Mawla. Okay, if the meaning of Mawla was what the Shia claim it, it was, then Ali would never give back to Abu Bakr. Never. They can say, oh no, this was Taqiyya. This was simply trying to just avoid Fitna. What Fitna? What? He died because of Fitna. What Fitna did he avoid? There was no benefit. If you accept kufr and misguided, if you accept it, don't challenge it. When it should be challenged, then you are guilty. If, uh, if Ali bin Abi Talib, Allah, he saw that Abu Bakr took power and this was his right, and the Prophet told him that this is you, he cannot give bayah to him. The moment he gives bayah to Abu Bakr, he is cancelling the Prophet He is dis he's, he's disobeying the Prophet. Yes. The Prophet said, you are, you no, are no. my successor. You are my no, successor. No. And what does he do? Oh, no, no. Actually, you know what? I'm not the successor. Or, or successor. even if I'm being forced to step down, I'll give bayah and accept. Okay, no, it doesn't work. Like, like, I have a bit uh, of a cancer. Wait, wait. Uh, but it was the Prophet's last hajj and he stopped everyone else behind him. There were many people and he stopped them. Why would he stop them? Stop who? The people that were doing Hajj with him. Yes. Why would he stop them just to say that Imam Ali is my friend? No, no, no. Heard you need no, no. He did not stop them. What happened was, it was in Bhattu. gave Qutbatul Wada on the 9th of the Hijjah, 10 Hijri, and then he made his way back to Medina. The rest of the Sahaba, they went. If he wanted to make this announcement, Rasulullah, where do you think he should have made this announcement? Where? 
خطبه الوداع because this is where he's asking هل بلغت هل بلغت have i delivered the message they say ya rasulullah you have delivered the message and then rasulullah three days later goes to another place where only few sahaba are around and he makes the statement no, that i've heard there were many people a lot many but not all all were there in arafa when he's delivered a long speech and we don't have anything like this so there's a context what is the context people from yemen ghazwa complain about ali ibn abi talib this is the context siyak. about ghazwa khumus yeah you know siyak the context the context you know the siyak al riway siyak al riway okay the context is people came to rasulullah and they complained about ali ibn abi talib and the prophet became angry rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam became angry and he stood up and he delivered the speech and he said whoever has me as his friend remember ali is also his friend okay and whoever is uh, his friend is my friend and whoever is his enemy is the en- oh allah you be his enemy so this was a statement now come to qartas you know the incident of qartas that's when he was on his deathbed and he when said, he was in deathbed and he said bring he paper bring paper this is this is after this is after khutbatul khutbatul wada and ghadi qum yes This is three days before he passed away, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thursday. This is Thursday. Okay. Raziyat al-Khamis. And then he says, bring paper. And Omar says, Ya Rasulullah. Uh, Asbunallah kitab Allah. Asbunallah kitab Allah. Okay. And then they all talk to each other and they argue and the Prophet says, leave me. Qumu anni. Okay. Now they say, they, the, Shia, the, Shia, the Shia claim, oh, this is the greatest catastrophe in the history of Islam. Rasulullah was about to write something for us and please... These company kufar or whatever you know astaghfirullah munafiqin a'udhu billah okay they forced the prophet how can the prophet first of all first of all oh, ali was there no no do what you want to do no okay no, 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 he was alive no, no. three more days it's impossible i'll tell you why it's impossible <laughs> How can you stop the prophet from delivering the message? How is it possible? No, maybe I want to pay for so it's it's a permanent thing. Maybe people know it. they cannot deny. Good. Good. No problem. So all the other teachings are denied they, we can deny them. How? So so this this argument doesn't make so sense. So what do you think is the reason why the prophet I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. The prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when this incident happened this was on Thursday. Thursday, yes. I don't know the date. Yeah, Thursday. Today is Monday. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam died Monday. On M- Monday. Monday. Mm. Thursday, 3 days Friday, Friday mm-hmm. Saturday, Sunday. In between Thursday and Monday are 3 three three days. 3 days. 3 days. And on those 3 days the Prophet was put on the member. He spoke on the member. So if there was something he wanted to write down, he, he would have said it on the member in front of all the people. and he did and he did you know what he said you know what he wanted to write i'm claiming this he said it on the member what did he say la'anallah la'anallah al-yahud wan nasara ittaqadu qubur anbiya'ihim masajid may allah curse be upon the yahud and nasara why because they made masajid on the graves of the anbiya is that for both sunni and shi'i all of them all 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 everyone wait relax what did he say i wait i'm finishing i'm finishing so 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 allah says in the quran allah tells the prophet balligh ma unzila ilayk deliver what has been given to you and do not fear them do not fear them if you're claiming if you're claiming that the prophet could not write something and we lost that information you are claiming the prophet did not deliver sallallahu alaihi wasallam and if he did not deliver he is condemned by the quran so that's impossible my brother it is impossible for the prophet to receive information from allah and not deliver it it cannot happen so this claim or this crying qartas 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 the greatest catastrophe it didn't happen it didn't happen this is a story the shias have made up and put a spin on it It is there it's in Bukhari so but so but happened. but we don't of course it happened but the interpretation but interpretation is, is ajeeb what is ajeeb because they are claiming that the prophet was going to give information which he could not this yeah. is now he said omar omar stop them the prophet stands condemned by the quran the quran says deliver and do not fear them do not fear who the kuffar do not fear the kuffar so the prophet had to deliver 
and if he did not, then you're claiming he left us without crucial information. No, but I just have a question. What is your intention of why Umar disobeyed the, uh, the Prophet? He said, please. Out of his love, the hadith, expl uh, uh, the, the hadith explains the, well. the, the detail. The, uh, Umar said, Rasulullah is in pain. Pain, he can't. He's in pain. He can't. Yeah, he cannot. So, uh, Ali, was yeah. there. So, so, but the Ali was there. So, Ali was there. Everything he says is correct. You cannot deny us or spin. Yes, should, yes. And he had understand. three days. He sat on the member. So Omar said, Radiallahu anh, he is in pain. He is ill. Leave him alone for now. Because Omar did not know that the Prophet is going to die in three days. He did not know. Omar does not have ilmul ghaib. He doesn't know. He thinks the Prophet will But live. Ali is there. He thinks the Prophet Ali is there. Is All there. The Why Omar Ali? Omar, fine. Omar, Omar, Omar was a criminal. Listen. 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 Fine. Omar was a criminal for stopping the Prophet. <laughs> How about Ali? Where is Ali? Ali? He's Ali there. Who is them? Write for me. Write for me. I want to. He was with them. People. I want this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this game, because they don't know he's going to die in three days. Only Abu Bakr. He had realized that the Prophet is going to die soon. Why? The Prophet said on the member. Not even that. No, no. He said there is a slave of Allah. Allah has given him two choices. Either to enjoy this dunya or come to me. And this slave has chosen Allah. Abu Bakr starts to cry like a baby, radiallahu anh. Babe, like a baby crying. And all the Sahaba, what is happening? What is wrong with this old man? Why is he crying like this? They realized, they, they, yeah, they realized that Abu Bakr knew what the Prophet was saying. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, I'm going. I'm leaving. Okay, so the Shia story does not make sense. In anything. In any of the Akai they have, it does not make sense. Bring more questions if you have. No problem. Inshallah. And I hope, I hope you will leave the way of your ancestors. If you were born into a Shia family, okay, you don't have to go in the grave. If they were... Shirk, Shirk, Shirk. No, Shirat al-Mustaqeem. Wait, yeah, one second. Shirat al-Mustaqeem is Quran and what the Prophet gave. If the Shia claim that we have the way of the Ahlul Bayt, they claim it, right? Because he's the ex-Shia. Yeah. Yeah. Explain, explain to him in Arabic. You, you know, know Arabic. have what we have. Yes. Yes. What do we have? We have the Ahlul Bayt. We have the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. You don't. I am asking. I am asking. Today, show me that you have the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. Wallahi, only a munafiq or a kafir will reject those teachings. You can never prove to me. You can never prove to me that you have the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt. Never. I'll tell you why. Because when you open Shia books, the four books, al kafi Al-Tahdib, Al-Istabsar, Man La Yahdur al -Fakir. When you open these books, there are only two Imams. 90% of the reports are coming from two Imams. Imamain. Jafar. Jafar. Imam Jafar Sadiq, Imam Muhammad al -Bakir. Yes or no? Yes? Okay. Majority, 90%. 90%. Okay. And and from those 90%, only a handful of people are relating information. Only a handful. Very few people. Who are they? Who are they? Zurara ibn al Zurara. Isham bin Hakam. Isham bin Salim. Abu Basir. All four of them are liars. Liars according to the Shia books. Liars. Liars. Kaddabun. According to Rijal al Kashi, go and open these books and read that these liars were attributing tons of information, tons, thousands of reports to two Imams. Okay, hardly anything from Ali, hardly anything from, from, from Hassan, from Hassan, from Hussein, from Hussein, Abidin, Muhammad al -Baqir. and then suddenly Muhammad al Baqir, Allahu Akbar. Okay. Muhammad the ja uh, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, Allahu Akbar, up there. And then Musa Qadim, down. Okay, down. Okay, so from Musa Qadim, radiallahu an onwards, nothing. Very little. So only two Imams. So when the Shias claim that we are Twelvers, they're not Twelvers. They are Itnainiya, <laughs> not Itna Ashariya. They are Itnainiya. Wallahi, I'm not hearing you. You're laughing, yeah? They should, they should change their name to Itnainiya. Not it's not Ashariya because Ashara are not there. There are only two, only two, and even those are, you know, the, the information attributed to them are lies. I'm telling you, we the Ahl Sunnah, we have more reports from Ali 
Hassan Hussein, Zainal Abidin, in our books than the Shia books. We have more information. Speaking of Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, after how many years did they publish their books? From the time of the Prophet's death. Bukhari was born in 194. 194. And he died in 246, if I'm not mistaken. Huh? 256. Okay. 256. So you now, Bukhari was about 60 years old. Sir? Okay, now. Bukhari, when he says, call out Rasulullah, for example. We are very fair, by the way. Yeah? We don't play games. We don't say, okay, you guys have this problem, uh, and we also have this problem. No. If we had the same problem, we would we would highlight it. We don't. Why? Because Bukhari tells us, call out Rasulullah, how? How? He says, his teacher, Haddathani, or Haddathana, our teacher told us, who? Makki ibn Abi Ibrahim, number one. Then Yazid ibn Abi Ubayy, number two. Then Salma ibn Lakwa, number three. And then Qala Rasulullah sallallahu So Bukhari has changed. He narrates information from authorities before him. So one teacher, second teacher, third teacher, and the Prophet. Likewise, there are four people in between Bukhari and the Prophet Bukhari says, Abdullah bin Yusuf told us kada wa kada. And his teacher, uh, Imam Malik, told him kada wa kada. And then Nafir, then Abdullah bin Umar, and then Rasulullah so, so Bukhari, every information he has in his book, every single report has the chain going back to the Prophet. Same, 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 same time, same time. How many years are they apart from the Prophet's death? Same time. 200? About 200 years. Okay. And Imam Malik, the teacher, was born in 94. Okay. He was only one, only 80 years apart from the Prophet. That's why weren't there any other major books before that? There were. There are. There are. Of course. Why, why aren't they bigger? Why aren't they bigger than? No, no, they're not bigger. They're not bigger. Musnad Ahmad is before them. Imam Ahmad was before them. Imam Ahmad was born before Bukhari. He was one of the teachers of Bukhari. We have Musnad Ahmad. It's the biggest number, the biggest book of, book of Hadith. And before Musnad, we had Mu Muatta. Why isn't, why isn't it one of the main two? Which one? Because it's too much. It's 28,000 reports. Muslim is 28,000. All of Bukhari is in Muslim. All of Sahih Muslim is inside Muslim. So why would you carry Muslim everywhere? Oh, watch, watch, careful. Okay. So all of Bukhari, all of... Uh, all of Muatta almost is in Muslim. So Muslim is uh, it's an encyclopedia of hadith. 28,000. Okay. Muatta is about 100 years after the Prophet of Allah. So Imam Malik was born in 94 and by 130, 140 he's already a Muhammad. Okay. And the Prophet died in 11 Hijri. So we have books, major books before Ta'asita. The only reason Bukhari Muslim became the, the best and the most popular because they standard. The criteria to assess the hadith, the information was very strict. Very strict. They did not. For example, when Bukhari narrates from two people, they have to have met. They have to have met, you know, uh, uh, they have to meet with each other. Imam Muslim had a criteria similar. Those people had to be on the same time, alive in the same time. Okay, in the same time, but Imam Bukhari did not stop there. Imam Bukhari, his criteria was you have to prove that they met each other. If you cannot prove that, I will not put that hadith in my collection. That's why he ended up only two and a half thousand reports. In Bukhari, we have 7,560 reports, something like that. And Bila Takrir, without repetition, without repetition, Without repeating, only two and a half thousand reports. So Imam Zabidi, Imam Zabidi has done an iqtafar of Bukhari. If you pick up Imam Zabidi's iqtafar, it only has two and a half thousand reports. So Bukhari did not take anything about the Prophet ﷺ until he was 100% sure that this is from the Prophet ﷺ. But with, with, with the people of Kufa, with the people of Kufa, about Imam Muhammad al-Bakir and Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, Qala Rajulun. Wallahi, there are thousands of reports. Now they start. Qala Rajulun, 
قال رجل قال رجل مجهول مجهول الحال قال الامام قال رجل ده الامام جعفر الصادق قال كذا وكذا وكذا اوكي ويت ويت فيرست اوف اول هو از ذيس يو سي قال رجل ده الامام الكافي الكافي بيك اب ثاوزندز اوف ريبورت قال رجل عن رجل عن رجل من هو الرجل؟ من هو الرجل؟ هو از ذيس رجل؟ نو ون نوز سو Like a hadith like this in our sources, we call it the Ravi is Majhulul Hal. Majhulul Hal on the wall. Ya Allah. Go. We do not keep it. We do not keep it. This, this is not Qadha Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because when there is a Ravi who is Majhulul Hal, we do not accept it. Here in the, in the Shia book, we have the, the donkey. In, in Al Kafi, the donkey of Donkey Nuh. in narrator. He's not, he's not fair, how fair. His name is so Al-Fair. this donkey, basically, how fair, how fair is it? The donkey of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi So it narrated to Ali bin Abi Talib radiyallahu an. Rewail. Haddathani yabi. An al. It's a joke. It's a joke. Wallahi, I'm not making this up. The donkey tells Ali bin Abi Talib. Haddathani, haddathani. Donkey saying, haddathani yabi. My father told me. The donkey is telling Ali bin Abi Talib. My, my donkey father told me that his donkey father told him. And the chain goes back to Nuh, the donkey of Nuh alayhi salam. Okay, this is Al-Kafi. This is in the coffee, okay?